Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Awkward Conversations. We are Seth and Sandra Dunn, and we are excited to come to you today with another episode um, that is most assuredly going to be awkward. And this is a little bit different than usual. It is different. How's it different? Are we they supposed, can't tell. Are we supposed to tell them? Yeah, how tell it's them. Different? Tell them how it's different. <laughs> we actually have a live audience yeah, tonight. First time. So <laughs> they are. <laughs> <laughs> they really are real people. <laughs> um, but we have have had conversations with them already about they can make noises. But they aren't talking per yeah. se. So yeah. uh, anyway, it'll be fun <laughs> if you hear sneezing. If you hear talking. Right. You know, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. So if you don't know, you probably do, but we choose a topic um, that is awkward between us or awkward in our culture, mm -hmm. awkward among Christians. And we talk about these things. I was telling um, somebody today that these are things that are important, things that need talked about. Yes. And that's part of what makes them awkward sometimes is that maybe these are things that are hard to talk about. Yeah. Or, or whatever. I mean, yes. they're awkward for some reason. So, and our topic tonight is particularly difficult for yeah. me because I have friends who have been sick and are living with sickness. I have friends who also, if I'm not giving direct attention here, it's because I'm looking at live people <laughs> here. So, um, But it's also because, so I have friends who are dealing with sickness who, you know, have been diagnosed with something, are living through it, trying to get through it. Um, and then it's awkward for me because I have a very strong belief about healing. I am... 100% convinced it is always God's will to heal. So we probably should tell them Bottom what the topic line. is. Well, yes, but let me finish <laughs> saying this. Okay, you finish that, okay. and then we'll tell them what we're talking about. Yeah, because it's obvious. It's going to be obvious. <laughs> this is a particularly difficult subject for me because I care so deeply for people, and I care so deeply when I see them suffering and I see them hurting, and they are... Yeah feeling like either this is God's will or this is just something they have to deal with or they've tried to get healed and mm -hmm. can't or didn't. Right. And it's very hard because where I stand, I have so many thoughts that I want to say them all yeah. and I want to tell them all the things, right. but I also don't want them to be hurt. I don't want them mm -hmm. to feel accused of anything. I don't want them to feel judged. If I were in their shoes, I would be struggling and suffering, like all the things. But that is hard for me because I want to console and comfort and empathize. Mm -hmm. But there's also a time to say, um, what about this? Yeah. Right. Well, and so you've nailed why this is awkward tonight, because mm -hmm. I am <laughs> I am quite certain I will offend someone tonight. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just yeah. as I was now, uh, remember, we Me prepare too. separately. So yeah. I have no idea, you know, how she's prepared for this. Um, but I'm, I am quite certain I'll be offensive tonight. And, and I just want to I want to make it clear. I'm not trying to be offensive, but there are things that need talked about. Mm -hmm. And, and they need brought up. So listen, we're not going to, it's like most awkward conversations. We're not going to solve tonight. Our topic, by the way, <laughs> and then I'll finish that thought. This is how this topic was presented to us. And this is exactly how it was worded. What do you say to people that have prayed for healing, but haven't been healed? Okay, that was the topic presented to us that we chose to take on tonight. Now, I am not going to try to be offensive tonight, but there are just, as you just said, there are some things that just need to be said. I hope that maybe as you watch this, you can understand we're not going to solve this tonight. <laughs> I, if, wish. If, I wish oh, we could, <laughs> but we're not going to solve it tonight. But I hope we prompt some thought process. So, you know, that that thing that that truth specifically, mm -hmm. which is, I think that's what might be offensive tonight, mm -hmm. that truth that has the the most power to offend you is also the truth that has the most power to set you free. So I'm hoping that tonight you can hear our hearts in this, mm -hmm. right? I was actually so, going to say, now remember, I'm sure if you followed us at all, you've heard us say this, but I was also going to say, remember that principle, the yeah. truth that can be the most hurtful and the most, most offensive can mm -hmm. also be the truth that actually sets you free. Yeah. So tonight, I really hope, or as you're watching this in the morning, whenever, I really hope that you will take a moment before you even hear any of it and just pause it and say, 
I'm going to be open. I'm going to listen yeah. and see what I hear different than maybe what I've heard before. So that's my request mm -hmm. because we don't want to be offensive. We want we want to be clear. And if we say things that are are offensive or super difficult or you have further questions about, please write in, ask your questions. We are happy yeah. to happy yep. to discuss that and have more conversation. But please open your heart and maybe this is a step into some freedom that you haven't had before tonight. Right. So. so there's a few assumptions that I see specifically in this topic. Mm -hmm. I would like to just put those out there. Do you think you should say that first or should I say these things first? Well, I don't know because I don't know what you have there, but you have like <laughs> four pages. So <laughs> I, um, It depends because, you know, as I was looking at this, I thought, okay, so this is assuming that the person already accepts that God is a healer. Okay. Um, I also think that there's some assumption in this question, as it's stated, mm -hmm. that is kind of common, what I would say, charismatic belief system mm -hmm. that we kind of have to play with a little bit. Yeah. So, so as I was preparing, I was thinking, okay, so I'm not trying to prove the point tonight that God's a healer because mm -hmm. the question assumes that. Okay. So I, my four pages is my own personal written <laughs> thesis about why I believe Father God wants us healed 100% of the time. Right. So I was going to go through and just give those reasons very quickly because I think that answers when, what do you say to people who have prayed for healing but haven't been healed? One of the first things is what do you believe about healing and how do you know 100% it's God's will? Sure, sure. Because it brings up, and so you probably should dive into this because even you just saying that makes me think, I think part of the reason you've we've got lots of people out there, they're they're praying for okay, this is the first point where I'm gonna be offensive. They're praying for healing because what they're doing is they don't actually believe in God as a healer. They're just throwing a Hail Mary pass. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, okay, well, I've got this sickness. So they haven't developed yeah. a belief system. They have not done the work right. to develop their heart to understand God's view and opinion of health and wholeness and healing. Yeah. And therefore they've come up against a roadblock, a wall, and they're just throwing up a Hail Mary pass. Well, yeah. man, that doesn't happen. Well, I don't know what's wrong with God. Sorry. I mean, I'm just well, kind of, I'm being real here now that people are going to have to invest in their hearts. Right. Or they throw up the Hail Mary and it didn't happen. Well, it must be God's will for me to be sick. Which again is not biblical. Right. right. Okay. So, Sorry, already several potentially offensive statements right there. And I'm not trying to be offensive. I just think we've got to think through these things. Yeah. So maybe, I don't know, dive in. I I'm think not going to. This is probably going to be a two-parter, but we'll maybe. deal with that and later. And I've got, yes, I have three pages of notes, but I'm not going to read everything on there. I'm going to go through the main points of why I believe it's God's will for us to be healed. First and foremost, when God created man, he put him in a garden, Garden of Eden, and there was no sickness in that garden. Adam and Eve did not experience sickness yeah, until after sin entered the world. So that's the first thing. Which shows God's heart. God's heart mm -hmm. is for us to live in the Garden of Eden in wholeness. That's one. Two, our bodies were created whole initially. And not only were they created whole, they were created to actually heal themselves. Wow. Anybody who actually yeah. studies realizes that it is a scientific principle. Anybody that actually studies. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, yes. That was not. No, but it's true. You got to actually study it, this. Go ahead. I was, I was actually, I was trying to say studies medicine or. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I didn't right. even say that part. Okay. But anybody who studies medicine or studies at all yeah. understands that <laughs> our bodies were made to heal themselves. Um, it I mean, Science tells you that you have everything you need in your body to grow another limb should you lose one. That's crazy. Bottom line. Like, that's what science tells us. But God created our bodies to heal themselves. Seem frustrated and, all that. And that's even yeah. thinking about people who aren't believers. Yeah, yeah. No, like, it's, it's I believe that people who are not believers still have the opportunity to see themselves healed because of yeah. the way our bodies the, were designed to work. The God and I design. don't mean to be sacrilegious, but you could actually get healed apart from God. That's mm -hmm. I honestly believe that. Not because God doesn't want to be involved in the process, but because of the way he created He's your system. He's established that process. Like he created all to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, some big broad statements here. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, and then third, even before Jesus came to earth, God was healing people. He was healing people and he made plans for wholeness for people. Even in the Old Testament, you see healing happen. And in fact, they were given rituals and laws of what to do when they got healed or what to do when they needed to get healed. Obviously, God would not have established those things if he didn't want them to be healed. Yeah. Four, Jesus is the exact representation of God. Jesus healed mm -hmm. everyone who came to him. Isn't that amazing? Everyone who came to him, every disease. Yeah. He healed everyone who came to him. Now, now there were people who didn't come to yes, him. Yes, right. There were people who, um, you know, stayed off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, everybody who came to him, he healed. If we want to see God's heart for us, we can simply look at the way Jesus lived and worked on the earth, mm -hmm. and we can see what God wants for us. It's very clear because Jesus represents God, yeah. and Jesus always and only healed. Also, just a clarification, God doesn't ever give somebody cancer, because if he did, Jesus would have been giving people cancer. Jesus would have been making people yeah. sick when he walked the earth. Yeah. He didn't do that. So not only did he heal them all, yeah. he also did not put sickness on them. He doesn't do that. that that's a violation of God's character to Absolutely. say that God puts, whether it's, it's a sickness or any other circumstance on you to teach you something. I'm sorry, but that's a violation of God's character of who he is. Of who he is. And, and you've got to look at these things in the yeah. totality of scripture. Right? Yes. From from the beginning to the end, Genesis to yes. Revelation. Who is God? Yes. Shannon and talked about this, right? Yes. You've mm -hmm. got to you've got to define even healing based upon who is God. Yeah. So that thought that he would put a sickness on somebody to teach him a lesson, sorry, mm -hmm. that violates scripture, yeah. totality of scripture and God's character. Don't be sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> this is awkward conversations. I'm not sorry. <laughs> um, number five. And this is more of a my own personal like rebuttal, uh, this idea of Paul's thorn in the flesh. Well, what do you say about Paul's thorn in the flesh? Well, Paul said, it is a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. <laughs> That's what he said it was. It is what he said it was. First of all. Yeah. Second of all, God said to Paul, my grace is mm. sufficient for you, yeah. for my power is made perfect in weakness, mm. which could also be said, I have given you my ability and my power yeah. My power, my ability to overcome this messenger of Satan. Yeah. Now, I know I am not a theologian. I know there perhaps are theologians out there screaming at me. That's way too simple of an interpretation. <laughs> okay. I, I don't even mind if you leave number five to the side. But number five is Paul's thorn in the flesh was not a thorn in the flesh. It wasn't a sickness. Given it was by a God messenger of well. Satan. Yeah. It's, it's clear it says that. Yeah. Number six, every promise and blessing that we are given is for our good. Every, you know, all the promises are yes and amen. And all of those promises are for our good. Not one of those promises is, yeah. if you do this, then you will have sickness and die early. Right. No, no. that's not part of it. No. Um, number seven, health is part of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. When you think about the kingdom of heaven and you think about, again, the Garden of Eden, which God created the Garden of Eden as an example of the kingdom of heaven, and you consider that the kingdom of heaven is full of wholeness. That is the plan for us. Yeah. So health is part of the kingdom. Right. Number eight, all of what Jesus came for is wholeness and strength. Isaiah 61 Look at Isaiah 61. Mm -hmm. And that is supposed to be about who we are as well. Particularly, I wrote this, um, we cannot do or be verses 3 through 7 and verses 9 through 11 if we are sick. You can go look that up. That's point number eight. Two more. Point number nine. <laughs> the word for salvation in the Greek is sozo or soteria. These words include salvation, wholeness, that's being whole, healing, that's being healthy, deliverance, that's freedom, provision, recovered, redeemed, restored, saved. This, These words, the list goes on for a long time. So healing is part of our salvation. 
And finally, number 10, James 5.14, is any suffering among you, is any sick among you, he should call for the elders of the church and they will come and deliver him. Oh, geez. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be a two-parter. Mm -hmm. um, you got very teaching. He will come and deliver you. So again, I look at James and I say, man, yeah. if yeah, if it's not God's will to heal, why would He bother telling us how to get healed? Yeah, like mm -hmm. common sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and, and Oof, yeah. Ten points. Sorry, I went way too long. Yeah, no, and that's okay because we probably we will come back and do. I think this is. I, I get why why this question was asked. Yes. You know because this yes. is this is a common thing that that that. I mean, maybe it's not common in all Christian circles, but in a lot of them, this question of healing and why it doesn't occur is a big deal. Um, and I will say, I wonder that too sometimes. Like, yeah, we never come. Line. We like, never I'm come not to saying these things. I've seen this perfected. I've worked it all out. It right. works every time I pray for it. No, like, yeah, we don't ever come to these things saying we have all the answers. Or that right. we haven't figured it out. So I know what's even, supposed to be. <laughs> you know what's supposed to be. You've just outlined. You know that deserves about ten hours worth of teaching. What you mm -hmm. just went through. Um, so, so when it comes down to it, how do how do they? What do, you say? what do we, what do they say to people? Now, listen, this is where um, I hope that in watching this, you're inspired to dig into it. Yes. If you've been offended by anything so far, take that as a point of diving in. There were several things that were just said here by me, but, but by Sandra too, I'm throwing you into the bus, <laughs> that I know are not, not the belief system in a lot of Christian circles. Well, I, I mean, I would challenge you to ask yourself, okay, but what about Scripture? What does Scripture say? Dive into it. One of the things that really came out as I was thinking about preparing for this tonight is this is a matter of the heart. So that is one of the things that I would say to people who have prayed for healing and it hasn't happened. I would say, listen, most of the time it comes down to this is a matter of the heart. What do you believe in your heart? So are you just throwing that Hail Mary pass up saying, hey, maybe, who knows, maybe God will heal me here. I need it. So maybe, maybe. Or do you believe in your heart that he loves you enough and that it's a part of your salvation? That's one of the things you said just a minute ago to where there's a belief system behind it. And that doesn't just happen. That That's where the effort is in in being a Christian mm -hmm. is that effort of, of renewing your mind and seeing it how God sees it. So if you're convinced that you know, this is how I would talk to someone, mm -hmm. you know, that was struggling with this. If you're convinced that you know God's heart in this arena of our lives, I, it changes everything. Yeah. It yeah. changes your prayers. It changes your attitude. It changes what you say. You know, there's, again, we, you know, for time's sake, but also just because it would deserve to be developed. But, you know, it's, for us, the foundation of scripture, right? right. But there's right. even science that shows I if I say, oh, I'm just getting sick. Oh, I just feel horrible. Oh, I'm getting a cold. If I'm saying those kinds of things, your body goes to work to make that happen. Our words are powerful. Scripture tells us that. If I say, no, 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 no. I agree with God. God's opinion is that he sent Jesus, and one of the things that he did is by his stripes, by his wounds, he carried all those sicknesses and took care of them for me, mm -hmm. right? Do I believe that? Start speaking it. Start, start speaking that God is good. God is kind. My body has everything that it needs mm -hmm. yeah. to respond to what it's being confronted with or attacked with or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Change how you speak. It is as a man. Renew that mind. back to that. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yeah. You will have what you believe in your heart. Yeah. And the reality yeah. is, and I am telling you, I have experienced, like, I've experienced feeling sick and yeah. having to walk that out, yeah. and having to remind myself of what's true, and I've experienced being in fear that I'm not going to get it, I'm not going to see it through, I'm not going to, and I am, again, I'm so empathetic towards people who are dealing with yeah. sickness, because I know I what that's like, but you know what, the bottom line that I always come to is when I'm in fear that I'm going to be sick, that I'm going to stay sick, that I'm not going to get healed, that I'm any of those things when I'm in fear, yeah. my body goes to work to make those fears happen. Yeah, it, it right. does. Even like, though they're... Bottom line, yeah. 
your scam. body will make your fears come true. Yeah. So you deal with your fears by recognizing God's heart and God's <clears throat> compassion. Right. And you let that come, let that God's heart and compassion come in and bring about that healing and understand that's his will for you. Yeah. So I yeah. think we have to do a second part on this because I do want to talk very real about why some people don't get healed. Yeah, because please. And I don't have all the answers. No. But no. I have some ideas. Yeah. And I have some insights that I would love to give you because I think a lot Absolutely. of people don't realize, you know, so they say so many people prayed for healing and they didn't get healed. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to base my theology on that because then I'm basing my theology on circumstances, not on the Word of God. Yeah. But secondarily, I would challenge some of those statements and those thoughts, and we can talk more about that. We can, we can. And I, you've said it, but I want to reinforce it and agree with it, that it's, we get it. Yeah. We, we understand this pain. We've both experienced sicknesses that we were both like, okay, what gives? Lost dear <laughs> right? friends. We've had friends Just die. Nice. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, like we get it. We, we do understand. We're not being, not lacking empathy here. Um, so we will come back to it. The other thing that I was just thinking is if this stirs something for you and you're like, wow, I, I want to know more here. We'll do a second part yes. at some point down the road here mm -hmm. fairly soon. Um, but there's lots of resources too. Yes. So, I mean, we have things the we Bible. can offer. <laughs> the Bible. I mean, that's a good resource. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> it is free. <laughs> but if this is something you want to dive into, we have things we can offer, but we also could point you to other resources. Mm -hmm. There's some great podcasts and teachings and books and yeah. uh, all Our kinds of good stuff one, out we should there. Maybe so. have um, a list, and we can actually put it in the link below the video to say, yeah. here are some resources. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. That's a good idea. Yeah. We'll compile those and put those together. So, really, all we've done today is open a can of worms. <laughs> But that's that's kind of the idea here. This is an awkward conversation. It's one that is hurting people, that that people are asking. I hear this question all the mm -hmm. time. They're asking it, it's hurting them, they're 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 challenged in this arena. Yes. But don't do anything with it. So yeah. I hope you've been inspired today to think if this has been a challenge question in your life, which it probably has been, because for most of us, everybody. I mean, I can't, I, mean, I don't, live on the earth. Right. Exactly. Sickness, right. Exactly. So hopefully it's inspired you to dig into it. Don't just accept, you know, what, what has been in your belief system, but dig into the word of God, dive in, invest in your heart, invest in your renewing your mind. What? Don't be a cow in the field. Don't be a cow in the field. Like cow in the field syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Where... You're just this cow out there. It starts raining and you're like, well, guess this is my life now. <laughs> don't try to find shelter. Don't go seek help. Yeah, there you go. Don't cuddle don't up be... with your buddy to try to stay warm. Like, I'm a cow in a field. I'm a cow. In... And that's what we do with our problems. We do, we do that. We, we do. get sick and I'll go to headache. Have you taken anything for it? P.S. I'm a fan of certain medicines, a lot of medicines. <laughs> Thought have, she you was taken an IV? <laughs> have you taken uh, an IV? No. Oh, you're a cow in a field. Got it. Okay. Well, listen, <laughs> that was a good analogy though, but we really should end this episode. Thank you so much for watching. We really enjoy doing this. I, yes. Hasn't this been an amazing joy doing awkward good. conversations? <laughs> oh, I think I'm really enjoying it. She's enjoying I am, it. I am enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Again, that was awkward. We're back to that so, difference of opinion yeah, and, and yeah. definitions. Yeah. It's fine. Exactly. Yes. It's fun. I really enjoy <laughs> interacting with all of you. We really yes, and they're watching and continuing to watch, and the numbers are going up. People are getting some out of out of this, and that's yes. good. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time on Awkward Conversations. Hey there. We just wanted to say thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell so that you get notifications. Uh, and let us know what you want to see, what you want to see in these videos. And um, that's all.